Next up, we have Derek Silva talking about volunteer and service organizations, an old idea that needs new legs. Um, Derek has volunteered hundreds of hours uh, at the Portuguese Canadian Club in Strathroy and recently started assisting the Strathroy Lions Club. After some discussions, he noticed the struggles of both of these and other similar organizations are experiencing. This has led him to delve into the future of volunteer run and service organizations and whether or not they'll survive the next 25 years. Derek Silva. Hi, thanks for coming tonight. Um, so I'm here to talk about the future of volunteer and service clubs or organizations like Rotary, Optimus, Lions, uh, and also cultural places like the German Canadian Club, the Hellenic Club, and local Portuguese Canadian clubs. So many people I've spoken to over the last few weeks have wanted to know more about service clubs. Basic premise is that they are built around the idea of service. Service to the local community, like the Rotary Rink at the Covent Garden Market, and service also in foreign communities. Rotary's big goal is actually to help eradicate polio worldwide, though they also work on building up basic human needs worldwide like sanitation, health, and education. On the other hand, optimists dedicate themselves to community service programs built around the needs of children, so things like internet safety programs, cancer fundraising campaigns, etc. Uh, Lions are somewhere in between promoting humanitarian needs in their own communities and also beyond. Uh, the Freemasons, which I'm sure everybody's heard of, uh, are similar but different. Uh, their main focus is actually on self-development through philosophy and reflection. Uh, though becoming a Freemason is also a gateway to joining uh, other groups housed within the Freemason umbrella, like the Mocha Shriners, for instance. Um, so, and as we all know, the Shriners are behind some really great children's hospitals. Uh, these clubs do have a huge impact on our, on our community. Uh, it's easy to spot signs and sponsorships with their logos everywhere you go. And to dismiss these clubs as unnecessary or useless, I think, is more dangerous than you would expect. Cultural-based clubs are really about one thing, promoting the culture and keeping it alive in a country where lots of immigrants have moved to. Uh, but all of these types of clubs suffer from similar problems, all leading to declining memberships and therefore a questionable future. I ran two surveys last week targeted at people who have and have not joined clubs before. Uh, I got some disheartening stats back, actually. So 69% of the people who had responded have never even considered joining one of these clubs, mostly because they either don't know another member or because they don't know what these clubs do. Uh, and out of the people that had considered joining, 40% couldn't figure out why they should join, despite the ambitious goals prom promoted by these organizations. I saw one common theme, though, a lack of awareness due to a lack of outreach and marketing on behalf of the clubs. There's also a prevailing opinion that these clubs are only for older people or are exclusive in some way. Greater outreach is definitely needed. Uh, I'm seeing signs of this on club websites uh, and even social networking sites, but there's still an air of uh, exclusivity uh, with clubs like Rotary where you actually have to be sponsored by an existing member in order to join. With the international, the international club websites, uh, they do a better job of communicating the value and work these clubs do. Generally, however, the local club websites are atrocious. Uh, they provide very little information and are updated very infrequently. On the flip side, existing members told me that they actually do enjoy the work that they do in the community and the sense of community they get. And really that's telling us that these are genuine groups of people working for good and just as genuine a uh, sense of community as something like Geek Dinner. And uh, so while there are certainly people who join these clubs initially in the interest of networking or selling something, there's a screening process in place for most of them to ensure that the members will actually bring value to the club. One big, big problem in the past uh, has been that men and women were either segregated, uh, were segregated as they still are in many Masonic temples, for instance. Joining the Order of the Eastern Star as a woman is much harder than actually joining the main Freemasons group as a, as a man. Uh, and when you hear that the Strathroy Rotary Club was the first one in Canada chartered with both genders in 1989, you have to assume that there's still progress to be made. Even at the Portuguese Canadian Club in Strathroy, women still aren't allowed to actually serve food at, in the banquet hall. Uh, they're relegated to the kitchen, although of course the men are allowed to cook. Membership fees and time demands also hinder membership quite badly. Uh, fees typically range between $100 to $400 a year, plus all the meetings and the events that you need to go to. 
uh, and you're actually expected to attend. When 38% 38, 38 of the people I surveyed say it demanded too much time, and 13% say they weren't actually getting value for the money or time being spent, this is something that clearly needs to be addressed. Not everyone can, can commit to weekly lunch meetings. As one per person put it, uh, I'm not confident most of these organizations can be saved without tearing apart the entire culture. A huge mindset change needs to happen from reaching out to the public without trying to sell us, uh, allowing for more flexible involvement and also breaking down the walls ex of exclusivity. And I will say that this isn't the end of this. I'm going to give this much deeper treatment on my blog in two or three parts. So five minutes doesn't do it justice. Thanks.